Welcome back to the Bernard Lee Poker Show. The World Series of Poker is underway as we have discussed. And what better to start the 2021 interviews of the bracelet winners than the first one who won a bracelet in 2021. He is a former guest of our show. He is also very uh, adjusted to the World Series of Poker final stage. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the main event final table stage back there. And this gentleman not only has seen that, but has been on it in 2012. He made the November 9 at the time. Actually, it was technically the October 9 because it happened in October. But he finished in fifth place that year. In 2013, he also picked up his first bracelet in Europe in the 1500 euro PLO event. But now he won his second bracelet. It technically was the first bracelet awarded, even though it was event number three, but it was the $1,000 No Limit Hold'em COVID-19 Relief Charity event for almost $50,000. Welcome back to the show, Jeremy Osmus. Jeremy, thanks for joining us here on the Bernard Lee Poker Show. Sure. Glad to be here. Congratulations. I mean, you uh, win literally the first event of the summer, or at least the first, get, or get awarded the first place of the summer. Nothing better than that to, to kick off 2021's WSOP, right? Yeah. Always good to, to win the first one. Like, you know, when, when you're in a cash game, you run it twice and you win the first one. People always say, always good to win the first one. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, can't, you can't argue with winning the first one, right? Right, right. You can't win them all exactly. unless you win the first one, although you couldn't have played in the other ones, but that's beside the <laughs> point. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, it was a very interesting event. It was a, a turbo event, and obviously it was for the COVID-19 charity. Um, before we get to the actual event itself, let's talk a little bit about COVID in the scenario of you're in Vegas. Vegas was completely changed during COVID. We've, we've interviewed many people talking about how bizarre it was to see the strips, the lights out, barricades in front of the casinos, et cetera. How was it for you during COVID? Um, we had it pretty good. I mean, you know, I have two kids, so homeschool, that's always tough um, at, at young ages. Right. No, on the computer, um, I played online poker mainly for for work. You know, there was no live poker, so you know, every I feel like everyone it, it you get restless and kind of feel trapped. But honestly, we have it pretty good here. Um, just on the outskirts of Vegas, we could get out and and take walks and get outside and do whatever we want. Um, I couldn't imagine being in like a a big city downtown area or something like that. Yeah. Um, so it, it was good. Um, all things considered, you know, we're, we're in a good position, luckily that the, we were able to, you know, help the kids with school. And I, I don't know how a lot of people can possibly even do that. They have to work full time, you know, and, and it just seems impossible. So we were fortunate in that sense. Right. Right. You, you said you played a lot online. Um, obviously Nevada is one of those states that you're, you're able to play online, thankfully for, for yourself, unlike myself in Massachusetts, where, you know, hopefully yeah. it's slowly start creeping back in, but more and more states are getting it. Did you see, see a big little push and extra boom online? Because obviously no one, everyone had nothing to do. I think early on. Yeah. The numbers were, were big for sure. And then, you know, WSOP did like a bracelet event and uh, all that stuff. So th those were busy. There, there was a fair amount of, of action online. I feel like it kind of died down over, you know, since I guess things opened back up, but there was an initial boom those first few months. And then it uh, kind of died down. Maybe we'll get bigger booms. Hopefully more states can, I know some states have passed it. Hopefully they join the pack and, right. you know, that, that'd be cool. I think that's going to happen eventually. It's insane that it's, here we are 10 years later and uh that hasn't happened it's crazy but i, I think um we'll start seeing some some progress on that front yeah i mean hopefully because of the COVID, you know if anything, maybe there's something good as small as it is that comes out of covid is that they see that obviously people have the the desire and the thirst to play poker online and so you have nevada you have new jersey 
uh, Delaware, Pennsylvania, Michigan. Um, I know that Connecticut is looking into it, and I know a bunch of other states as well. So you, you have to hope that you know within the next few years, maybe we'll maybe we'll hit that ten state mark. You, you never know. You, we'll, we'll see what happens. Surely, surely. <laughs> So you enter this World Series. Uh, interesting, in, in my opinion, when you, when you look at your Hendon mob, there are a lot of people who play in these high roller events. Um, obviously, you, you look at Daniel, you look at, we just had Shannon Shore on, who, who's been playing a lot of these big events as well. But you kind of mix them up. You play in a lot of these big ones, but you don't shy away, obviously, from the smaller events as well, whether online or live. Um, you just recently finished uh, runner up in one of the Poker Masters events uh, just uh, about a month ago and finished fifth in two other events as well. Do you find it just a different style going back and forth when you play in these 10 to 25K buy-in events as opposed to a $1,000 event? Uh, obviously, they're two different player pools. Do you have to adjust what, when you play in them? Yeah, you do. Um, you can get away with with a few more things um, in, in the, the smaller buy-in like WSOP events. Honestly, that, that, ch that COVID event, looking around the room, I saw several high rollers in that event. It wasn't, people didn't really come out for it. I thought it would get seven or 800 people. Right. It, it got like 270. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I barely played honestly. And then looking around the room, like, you know, um, it's just one of the smaller events, but, um, but yeah, I, I kind of play everything, you know, and I play the mix too. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot else going on that day, so I decided to play that. But during the Poker Masters and the U.S. Poker Open, I live right here in Vegas. Those are going on. I try to to play a lot of those. Right. Play most of those. Yeah, it seemed like that COVID event, it was on Thursday. It was on the first day. It was a $1,000 buy-in. You had the casino event um, the casino employee event, but then the next three days was the reunion. $500, you could throw an extra bullet in each of the flights. And it looked like a lot of people who were coming in for that event were either landing on Thursday or coming in specifically for that reunion event. And obviously it's going to have a bigger mm. prize pool, right? 5 million guaranteed. And exactly. And you have two bullets now instead of the thousand for this COVID relief. And so yeah. like, you know, we're looking backwards in time, right? We're Monday morning quarterbacking, but it's probably why the numbers were so low, right? Without a doubt. People saw that first event on the calendar, and that's just the obvious kind of first event to come out to. The buy-in's lower. I mean, the COVID event, too, like it's raked, and then it's charity, too. So right. it's honestly, like, arguably not profitable for very many people at all. Right. Because the, you know, 20 percent is coming out or maybe 23 percent or something right off the top. So, you know, if you're trying to make money, it might not be the best the best spot to, to right, play. Right. Right, Whereas right. the 500 is 10,000 people or more and, uh, you know, 10, 10 or 15 percent rate more normal. Right. But but if you're going out and trying to win a bracelet and, and, and I've <clears> talked about this a lot, obviously mm -hmm. mixed games, you have a better chance because there's a fewer number of players Although mm. those players are probably their skill level is going to be a little bit higher because it's such a specific yeah. game like stud or Raz or whatever it might sure. be. But I've always said like, you know, to win a bracelet event in no limit Hold'em is so difficult because you have 1500 people, you have a thousand, you know, 3000 people or whatever it might be, unless you're playing in this $1 million buy in one drop, which has 80 people or a 50,000, which has 200 people. What this was a thousand dollar buy in only at 240 people. I mean, like it, it's it's incredible. Exactly. This is one of the easier ones to win, um, for sure. Um, yeah, usually you have to go to the super high buy-ins or the mixed games to get a, a smaller field, but this one was was a was a good a good spot. I mean, like I said, that being said, there still were like, you know, Ali was in there and um, you know, Adrian Mateos was in there, like right, a lot of people right. that Kind of wouldn't expect to be in there right so right. it was still tough you know like there's still tough players in it but right 
Well, you had a tough final table too. Uh, Asher yeah, Connor, WPT everyone. final table yeah. uh, winner, Steve Gross, Bracey. I mean, like this is not a, yeah. this wasn't a joke final test. Shannon Shore, who we who we just talked about, he he made it into the money as well. This was yeah. far from a joke tournament in the sense of players, um, but. You, this is a turbo. I mean, let's make no bones about it. This was a yeah. turbo event and you didn't play much at all, right? Cause you didn't start on time. No, I late registered. I went there. I had to wait in line for a while. Um, I think I got in, you could register till 10 something. I got in at like eight, nine o'clock maybe. So I just yeah. fired one bullet. Yeah. And just won every all in basically. <laughs> I haven't done that in a live tournament for, for a while, you know, uh, right. this year for sure. All those high rollers. I'm not doing that over there. I mean, yeah. I've, I've got a second over there and a couple of fifths, but uh, man, it just, it was so noticeable how much better I ran in this tournament. I just won, you know, five out of five all ins in the first two hours I won. And I was like, geez, I haven't done this for a while. Right. Final table, same stuff. I just, you know, I won almost all the all ins, and that's yeah. that's kind of what happens a lot to whoever wins a tournament. Sure, sure, and and that's really we talked about this uh, with with uh, Ryan Haggerty, who won a, a turbo a bracelet event online this summer. Is is that you, the money bubble break? Often this happens in, in in a turbo event. Amazingly, the 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 blinds like people get through with like two or three blinds, four blinds because it's just so quick. The, yeah. the, the, it goes so fast. This isn't. Exactly. A, you know, it's because you're everyone holds on the same way as a, a normal event, but because it's turbo, sure. you, you're the blind could double, if not triple, by the time you're on the bubble to when it actually breaks. So you could be going in with 14 big blinds, and now suddenly you're going out with four. And that's, I think, it's very common. Um, exactly. Very, very average, uh, short average stack, really, right. really short. And then once the bubble breaks, it is <laughs> yeah. and everyone busts very, very quickly. Then about 30 minutes later to 45 minutes later, it all settles in. But now you got about 30 or 40 people who are still relatively in the world that we play in short stack, right? They're all about 15 to you know, maybe even 10 to 20 big blinds. Yeah, and exactly. it is literally the best you could ever see is bet. All in. there's no three betting. There's, you don't no, have no, enough no. of a stack. You bet all in no. or all in right away or whatever it might be. Yeah, you're you're exactly right. Even the final table, the average stack was under 20 big blinds, I think, when we yeah. started at like 17. You know, there was two, maybe three people that had around 10 big blinds or something out of five of us. Or yeah, yeah average stack might have been 15 or less. Yeah. Right. Kind of funny. And and it didn't last long, right? The final table did no, not last long at all. Hour and a half, I think. That's we started crazy. At four, by five thirty, it was done. That, that's that's it's crazy <laughs> if you think about it. I mean, like you know, it, mind you, there was only um, five players left, but right. we had to go. And and it, I remember looking at it online and uh, looking at the uh, summary. Uh, you know, all the updates. And usually when you go to a day, you go to the bottom pay of the page and it has number one, number two, number three. In other words, the different pages that you could read out. I went to the uh, bottom and I, I scrolled down to the bottom. I scrolled again, I scrolled again. I go, where's the second page? There was no second page. It went yeah. so fast. It just <laughs> went, boom, done, finished. <laughs> so uh, amazing for, for that to happen. Um, you know, you, you came into this uh, World Series, like I said, uh, uh, three final tables from the Poker uh, Go Masters, uh, a runner-up finish as well. Did you feel good coming into the World Series? Um, yeah, I felt good. Um, kind of like my motivation was a little different than normal. I don't know if it's because of COVID and everything. You know, you get used to to not being around crowds so yeah. going down there that I, it's it's not something I was crazy about doing like not just because of COVID just because I don't I don't like crowds in the first place and right. lines and all that stuff you know so honestly I I um I, I was motivated but I didn't know how many events I would end up playing and, yeah, yeah, and this yeah. and that, or if I would play cash more see how it went but um uh but yeah I, I came off a good series i mean an okay series i had i think i like broke even over there with 
three good results, you know? Yeah, it's crazy. So, so I felt good coming in and I feel good the rest of the, the summer and I play the mixed games and all that stuff. So there's some, some good stuff with that all summer. And I almost played the 25 K horse. Actually, I just haven't been playing a lot of stud games at all. Mm-hmm. So I decided to play this one instead. I was debating registering the 25 K horse the next day at the start of the day. Yeah. And then I ended up winning this anyway. So, so yeah. Talk a little bit about, you know, people have been concerned, obviously, uh, they, they have mandated the vaccine, etc. How was it for you? you? You're literally there on the ground. Uh, I don't get there for, uh, for about uh, 10 days or so. How was it to register? How, how comfortable did you feel? Um, were a lot of people wearing masks still at the table? You know, kind of give your perspective of what you saw uh, for people who haven't been there yet for, to my listeners. So it seems like there's there's really long lines. This will be the worst weekend, obviously, sure. for setting up the the COVID, you know, the passport thing on right. clear. Yeah. I went down early in the week. I went down like on Tuesday. Smart. Me and a friend of mine went down. We went to the main cage. The, the poker run wasn't open. So we were able to set that up really quickly. Yeah. Uh, took care of a couple things there. Um, but then I had to wait in a long line to, to set up your, the Bravo account, the online right. registration, which is key. Everyone should right. definitely do that. They've, they, they've had than, that for, they've had that for years. I've, I've used it every single year. I long. have I, too. It's I, just great, a no brainer. Yeah. It costs you $3 per entry to do it. Yeah. And it's just the, you, you know, you just, you, you, you want to stand in line for an hour or you want to pay $3. That's up yeah. to you. Sometimes longer than an hour. Yeah. yeah if yeah. you're not, if you're not a diamond, it could be, you know, the line could be wherever. You know exactly so so yeah they check it when you register the first time you register i think and then you're good yeah you're like in the system um and you have to wear masks in the hallway and all that stuff or anytime you're standing up and then at the table you don't have to wear a mask because everyone's vaccinated and um uh, i think still 30 percent of people are wearing masks probably yeah. even yeah. at the table I, I, I do occasionally too. I have been a fair amount because I plan on playing a lot of poker this, this month. And I, I don't want to get sick, you know, whether it's COVID or even just any sure. sickness, you know, we're starting the, to see the why real flu, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The real flu. I think now we kind of get why people elsewhere in the world were of wearing masks all the time. And, you know, I remember going to Europe and playing and seeing like John Joanna and he was wearing a mask like right. five years ago. And I was like, it's weird. You know, I just don't see people wear masks, of but it's like a, almost a thing out of respect for others too. If you're feeling sick, right. I think we all kind of get that now. Yeah. Yeah. I think people now suddenly get that r- rationale yeah. and, and, and in all honesty, at least my opinion is, is that if I'm wearing a mask, which I will be, if I'm wearing a mask, it's my bother, not yours. Right. Like, I mean, I'm not yeah. bothering you. It just bothers me. It's yeah. difficult for me. And so it shouldn't bother anybody. You know, it's no one care. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, but people, so, people like to force their opinions. Of course. Them. Of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that, that's, get- I've, I've, you know, like I said, we are fortunate being in New England. It is a relatively high vaccination area, our area. Um, but you will find certain areas. I have gotten it. I've gotten confronted uh, when wearing a mask once before, and I was very surprised. You know, especially right. where we are. You know, like I was like, "What is going on?" You know, they <laughs> they misunderstood what I said, and uh-huh. they thought that I was telling them you should wear a mask. I was asking them what the rules were because I wasn't clear. Oh, and gotcha. They took oh, it yeah. the wrong way, and yeah. I was like, <laughs> "Okay, we're going to stop this conversation now, and I'm going that way." <laughs> you know, like good. Well, I haven't heard it, at the tables. I haven't heard any of that. So, well, it's good. So that, that's good. I mean, I, hopefully, everyone's very sensitive to it, and that's good because that that's obviously important for people to have a good time at the World Series. Sure. Um, talk a little bit about you know. Listen, you won the first one that was available. What is the rest of the summer for you? You talked about mixed games. You play in other no limit games. What you know? How do you determine your schedule? Do you look at it well in advance and then figure it all out, or do you wake up that morning and say, "I'm going to play this no limit one. If I bust out of that one, I'll just jump into the three o'clock mixed game." You know, well, how do you determine your schedule usually? The latter, for sure. I'm yeah. always the guy that. I see people have their their schedule all planned out, number of buy-ins, all this. I I just kind of because I do play everything um, in in all price points too. So I kind of just wake up and you know the night before I see what there is and 
And then I just like today, there's a $600 no limit that will be big. And there's a 10 K 08, which I'm actually really excited about the 10 K 08. Yeah. Then I'm like, well, maybe I should just play the, the 600. Cause if I'm still in, if I miss registration of the 08, right. Cause you can register till tomorrow. Yep. I'm already well into the money. Right. My EV is higher there, but it's just hours in my life, I guess. But, um, but generally I just grind all day during the series. Yep. I do feel like I'm getting old now though. I'm, I'm 42 <laughs> and, um, and you like, old fart. <laughs> I know it's like, I can tell though this year, like I'm, I'm more tired already. Like that's why I didn't almost play the turbo the first event. Mm-hmm. Cause normally what's going to happen. I registered nine 30. Uh, I'm going to play until, you know, worst case scenario, you play till like three 30 for like, Right. like four thousand dollars you know right. and that's that can happen a lot right so i was kind of like oh why am i playing this because i go to sleep at 11 p.m normally right yeah but i need to get on the normal wsop yeah. schedule now the late schedule but um so yeah uh but but just that one night of staying up that late then i get up early the next day because i couldn't sleep in that i've been tired i've been like a zombie for like three days you know right so right. Uh, I just need to get on the late schedule. I'll be, I'll be good. But uh, right, so I mean, would would you consider like, like you said, oh well, I, I really want to play uh, in the 10k. You know, I'm just gonna skip the morning one, sleep in, and then just go to play the 10k. I mean, is that is that definitely yeah, yeah. Certain and, ones? and the early ones, I'm I'm not gonna get there on time probably. Like yeah. you know, the the 600 today, if I play, it's gonna be max late reg or maybe a little before it's kind of appealing max late reg because it's right after dinner if i do it mm-hmm. before i have to go and play right. a couple hours. then then <laughs> a 75 crazy. minute break right you now so i might just max late reg and see if i can spin it up if not right. jump in the jump in the well way. especially for you if you're comfortable playing in the 10 to 25k you have a 600 dollars deep stack it's I mean, for better or worse, it's almost like a satellite, right? Like, I mean, like you're literally just coming in 600 on a satellite. Let's see if I can spin it up in 30 minutes to an hour. And if not, I'll just jump over at the 10K. Exactly. So that, yeah. Funny you bring that up because the, the event I won was kind of like a satellite. Because yeah. it, was, it was like 50K. Sure. There was a 25K the next day. I fired two bullets. So I'm losing <laughs> for the series. <laughs> that's old. the life. That's the life of Pokemon. And that's. That's what I really want my listeners to understand and listen to. I, I, I'm not sure if – can you say that again, Jeremy? Because I don't think everyone heard that. Because we said it's So I, I won the first event. The COVID-19 event for, for almost – for, for 49,000, right? Basically 49,000. Yeah, 49,000. One of the smaller events probably in history, right? right. Brace right. events? I don't know. Yeah, I'm probably. Sure. Yeah. Then there's a 25K no limit the next day, after, the day after I won, and it was one re-entry. I fired two bullets. I busted. I was out. So I, and then yesterday I played the 5k online, the 500, a couple times, a live turn. So, you know, I'm, I'm losing for the, for the series already after yeah. winning. <laughs> it's, hard, it's actually pretty hard to do. Right. Right. I mean, and, and that's the crazy thing about all of this is that everyone talks about the wins, but unfortunately there's the non caches and it's just difficult. Right. And that, that's what makes the world series. So tough. You talked about the poker masters. You have, three caches, two fifth place and, and a runner up uh, and in total winning uh, close to a quarter million dollars. And it was just fairly positive, right? Covered buy-ins basically. Yeah. 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 Yeah, For sure. So yeah, you want to try to win the big ones you buy into. (laughs) The 25 K one, right? (laughs) Yeah. I've not been doing that at all. I won the small one and and losing in the big ones, not the way to to profit. You know, you can look at how well you're actually doing by number of buy-ins being up and down, which is like a true ROI, but uh, dollar wise, it doesn't equal out like that. (laughs) So finalizing it up, uh, what are some of the events that you're looking forward to for the rest of the summer? Like, you know, like I'm definitely not missing this. Obviously the main, let's pass on the main. But what other events, when you look at the calendars, you're like, I, I don't care what's in the morning. I'm playing that one because it's a must for me. You know, that kind of thing. For me, yeah. it's Deuce to Seven. I love Deuce to Seven. I literally fly in and I play the Deuce to Seven first. I don't play in him, no limits. And then I go from there. That's just me. But like, the so for you, well, sorry? Triple draw or single no, draw? No, single draw, single draw. Deuce to Seven, single draw. So the, the 1500s on, on October 15th. So I fly in literally on the 14th and then I play that. And usually the 10K is a few days later, but this year it's like a week and a half later. And I, I don't know if I'm sticking around that long, but gotcha. what about you? 
Um, I really like PLO these mm -hmm. days. So, and they added some bigger buy-in PLOs. I think there's a, there's a 25 and there might even be a 50. Yeah. Um, yeah, they added a 50 and there's always a 25 for the last two or three years. And then there's a 10 and like a five and a three, maybe. Um, I'm pretty excited for all those. Um, the, I might play the poker players championship. I played oh, that great. a few yeah. times. Um, yeah. That's a good one. And they have no limit in PLO in there. So I like that, obviously. Um, yeah, in the main, of course. Besides that, I mean, as far as mixed games, probably this 08 one's the one I'm most excited about. And I'm talking about not even making a priority. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah so I kind of just will, will play whatever I can. But some of those PLOs, I'll make a priority. But it is true. Like, if I play something earlier and I make it through, it's my EV. I would have made more money than my, right. my expected EV in the other tournament, probably. You know what I mean? Right. right. Yeah. So, Especially if you feel comfortable buying in on day two, which is a, is a bonus right. now. Right. So, yeah. Well, Jeremy, congratulations. Bracelet number two for you. Uh, the first bracelet that was awarded in 2021, the first live bracelet, obviously, during the COVID-19 charity event. Uh, congratulations and, and wish you all the best for the rest of the summer. Hopefully we'll do this interview again after you win your second bracelet this summer. Awesome. Let's do a second or yeah, third, maybe. I <laughs> love it. Great. Love it. Love it. Jeremy Osmus is here, two-time bracelet winner now, and uh, really appreciate him coming on. And if you enjoyed this video, and there will be many more during the World Series, definitely like and subscribe here on my YouTube page as we are going to have many additional guests uh, coming up this summer, including Daniel Negreanu and many other WSOP bracelet winners. Jeremy, thanks for joining us here on sure. YouTube. Yeah, you, you do a good job with uh, the interviews and everything. I enjoy them. So I yeah, people should check them out. Appreciate it, Jeremy. All the best, my friend. Take it easy. Thanks a lot.